Hello again, gamers. Welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Board Game Captain. I'm Lynn. And this is our Gen Con wrap-up video. This should be the final video we put out about Gen Con 2018, which we got back from as of the recording of this just a couple days ago. And in this video, we're just going to talk about our general experience at Gen Con 2018, as well as comparing it to previous years. And we're going to discuss all the stuff we did and run you through what happened at our Gen Con 2018. So, um, so well, we got there on Wednesday, mm -hmm. as per our normal pattern of how we do things. And we met up with some friends of ours uh, who we know through going to Gen Con, which is one of the cool things about Gen Con, from Scotland. And we had lunch with them. Mm -hmm. So we went over to Nada. Nada, yes. It's by the Circle Center Mall. Okay. Circle I... City? Circle Center? I think it's Circle Center. It's, it's actually... I mean, it's part of the mall, right? But the entrance yeah, is from the yeah, outside. Yeah, the entrance. I don't think you can't enter it from the mall. The entrance is on street level outside, mm. but it's like on the bottom of the mall building. It's attached. And it was delicious. Yes, it was uh, Mexican food. Um, and I mean, they had tacos and stuff like that, but I had uh, Mexican poutine. Yeah, so it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really authentic Mexican food. No. It was like Mexican fusion, yeah. I guess. <laughs> it was like... Um, it was, it was like potato wedges with, of course, you know, cheese and and I think they put like pork on there, like shredded mm. pork. There's a bunch of stuff on it. It was delicious. It was, yeah, that place was absolutely awesome. You had my leftovers because I couldn't finish. Yeah, and it, it was good. And uh, everybody liked what they had. And I would, uh, if you're looking for a nice, uh, good restaurant close to the convention center to eat at maybe before the convention starts because you're there early or just because you want to go somewhere other than the food trucks, I would recommend Nada. I think Nada was really tasty. I really liked it. So then we we went and got our stuff in the exhibit hall. And just this is just another note to um, people who are thinking of going to Gen Con. One thing that is always negative, always a bad thing about Gen Con, is anyone who gets their stuff at the Will Call line, the Will Call line is always abominable. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about 60,000 people and a too large a portion of them get their stuff at the Will Call. And when I say stuff, I'm talking about event tickets and badges. Mm -hmm. From Wednesday on, the Will Call line was unreal. It was, it was, it was the entire length of the convention it center and out, out the, the door. It went out the door at one point. I mean, if you live in the United States... And you buy your stuff early enough, just pay the extra ten dollars. It's completely worth it. And get it shipped to you. Yes. Because yeah, we got it shipped to us, so we had no muss, no fuss, and it was much easier that way. And I was glad we did, because when we saw that Will Cole line, I was like, wow, is that we did that we did the Will Cole line the first year and never again. And I highly recommend to you, if you can, get it shipped to you. If you can't, make friends with someone who you can get it shipped <laughs> to. Yeah. Um, because oh my god, is it so much better not to have to wait on the Will Cole line. And if you do have to wait on the Will Cole line, do it on Wednesday when you don't have to do a lot of events. Don't do it on a day you have events because then you might miss stuff. Mm -hmm. So then what did we do after that? What was the next thing? Was that the... We went to the Warhammer. Thing. Oh, the, the collectible card game yes. demo. Yes. So we had gotten an invite from, um, I forget the name of the company that makes the trading card game, but it's not Games Workshop. It's been licensed out to another company. Um... They must have been British because all the people they had working there were, were British. Um, um, most well, the, the the lady who checked us in and no, the person she, I, who was giving out the bags were all. I thought she was from New Zealand. She did not have a British accent. Well, you're better with accents than me. I'd it have to... was it was either New. I thought New Zealand, possibly Australian. I am not like okay. I I'm... cannot for sure tell the difference, but she struck me more as New Zealand. I would like to apologize right now because <laughs> one or both of us have gotten your accent wrong. And I would like to apologize directly to you if you are watching this. Wherever you are from, you are all lovely. Those people <laughs> were awesome. They were really nice to us. We showed up. It was a press event for the game. Mm -hmm. And we showed up. They were very nice. They checked us in. We got entered into a raffle. We didn't win, but that was it was still really nice. We all got little goodie bags for going, which included... A starter deck for the game, which mm -hmm. was the coolest part of it. We each got a free starter deck for the new. It's called Warhammer 
Age of Sigmar Champions, the trading card game. And you know what? The game itself, um, the mechanics were really interesting. I was expecting it to be like another Magic the Gathering yeah. clone, and it was not. I, I, I went in there um, and was... I was just like, you know, if I if I'm not if it's unnecessary for me to play, if they don't have the right amount of people, it's okay. I'll just stand here. But there there was enough people, so I did play it, and it ended up being a lot more. Um, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It was very thinky. It was very brain burning, yes. and um, it was weird because your your units were not like what you would think of as units in a card game. It was very interesting. They were they were like it was like engine building. It's like you were setting up an engine, and every turn they would turn and do a certain amount of damage, mm -hmm. or heal a certain amount from you. And it was really just all the damage was going directly to the player. You yes. couldn't actually, for the most part, I mean, there were some things that allowed you to destroy cards, yes. but it was really more about just getting your engine built the right way so your your forces could harm your enemy. Mm -hmm. And it was really neat. Um, what did we do after that? After that, was that... I believe we went to the stink, the stink after that. So we go to the stink every year. Now, the stink is... It's kind of a mixer party sort of event that happens on Wednesday. Everybody's allowed to go to. If you can make it to it, I do recommend it. It's fun. It's a cool way to start off your Gen Con. Now, now we wind up doing stuff before the stink. But we used to always start our Gen Con at the stink. And you go in. You always get a little bit of free loot, like some free dice usually. We got some dice. Um, we got some cool stuff there. Now, I want to give a shout out to somebody who was in the line in case they're watching. We missed one of the freebies. It ran out before we got to it. It was this role-playing game book of Octung Cthulhu. And somebody, uh, I went to just ask them what the book was. And they said, oh, we each got a copy. And we don't need two copies. We live together. And she gave me a copy. I gave her some of my uh, board game captain dice, which I had the custom dice. And I was giving them out to anyone who I gamed with or... Uh, who recognized me if anyone came up and said, hey, you're the board game captain, which also, I want to give a shout out to any of my fans who came up and said hi. I have, I really hope those dice bring you good luck. I gave everybody some dice. So I gave uh, her and he some dice because they gave me one mm -hmm. of the copies of the book and they were really nice. And this thing was fun. We, we had a good time. We, we, we met up again with our friends from Scotland. We chatted a bunch. We mm -hmm. had some beverages and we, um, oh, and... You, you wanted Flamingo Croquet? I won a I won the Flamingo Croquet Championship of the Stink Gen Con 2018 <laughs> to to everyone's surprise, including myself. So it was they it, they always do these fun little party games at the Stink, all sorts of different fun little party games. And this year it was the the Stink was Alice in Wonderland themed. Mm -hmm. So you knew they had to with Alice in Wonderland themed, they had to do something Flamingo Croquet ish. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they did this weird little game where they taped plastic lawn flamingos to the end of sticks. And they had like a foam ball. And they had a couple of, of these arches set up. I think we got some video of it. It's probably, yes. it's probably already up in, in the Day Zero compilation video, I'm sure. And I, I was like the only person who managed to get it through. Because you only had three swings. Mm -hmm. And I was the only person who managed to get it to, through two of the of the arches nobody else because it was so hard to direct that ball and i think it was mostly luck so i don't want to really like claim it too hard but i i i got it so it was pretty awesome i've never i've never actually won any prizes at the stink before they gave me a cool little kind of like trophy thing it's like a, a disc that sits on a stand that says stink uh whatever number stink it was and uh, it was really kind of neat Mm -hmm. So after that, we usually go to the beer tapping, though we, we, we stayed kind of late because I was waiting to get my prize. Because mm -hmm. at that point, I had known I won. I, yeah, I think this is the first time we stayed until until that point because mm. they, he came around like uh, 20 minutes before And was telling me, and, you're, you're and, still winning. And, and told you, like, we're wrapping up the Flamingo game and you're the winner. So yeah. hang around. So, so we hung around. We don't usually stay till the very, very end. So um, that was kind of cool. I also, they also gave me a, a, a DVD box set to an anime show I haven't seen mm -hmm. before. I'll have to check it out. I hope it's cool. And um, then what? Then what, uh, we had... Oh, I had some interviews after that. Yes. So I had three total interviews on Wednesday. I think one of them was actually before it. I think I forgot to mention. So I did three interviews on Wednesday. I interviewed um, Matt Shoemaker, who is designing the upcoming game Be Lives. We live only for summer. He was a lovely gentleman. Um, he even 
which I'll, I'll uh, before the Kickstarter goes live, I he's loaned me a demo copy of the game to check out and do a preview and tutorial video for. So that will be coming right before the Kickstarter goes live, and then I'm going to be returning that to him. But um, uh, very nice gentleman, great interview. Check it out if you haven't already. The game looks awesome. I can't wait to try it. It's got tiling and work replacement, which are mechanics I adore. Then I, I interviewed Travis, uh, with Travis Winter, who works at Atlas Games. Mm -hmm. Another lovely gentleman. Great guy. He keeps uh, inviting me to come hang out with him over in Minnesota at Atlas Games. I'm, I think I have to take them up on it because I, I love those guys. They're great. I love Atlas Games. They do some great work. And I would love it if they would just let me come you know, do some videoing in their facility, you know, just check out the Atlas Games facility. It'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. They are a company, there, there's certain companies where I'm like, I'm a big fan of their company because they do great work. And for Atlas Games, they're an older company. They've been around a long time. But unlike some older companies who keep like resting on their laurels, they keep moving forward mm -hmm. and they keep putting out good quality stuff. And when they re-release new editions of older games, they up the production value significantly every time they do a new edition. There's a lot of other people that'll just sort of like be like, oh yeah, new edition, do the same thing we did last time. Mm -hmm. And they don't do that. And that's why I'm a fan of Atlas Games. I really like that they keep looking to the future. So he was great. Check out that interview if you haven't already. That's already up. And then the third interview was with Christian Strain, uh, who is the designer of one of my personal favorite worker placement games of all time. I've played it with people of all ages. And it's never gone over poorly. Mm -hmm. And that is asking for Trobles. And you're, you've are you talked a lot about how much you love yeah. Trobles, too. I mean, you... you you. I also, you know, intuitively, intuitively knew how to pronounce it correctly. <laughs> the two of them were ribbing me about this. I will this. never not rub yes, that in. Yes, <laughs> because, because I, I was mispronounced. I was calling it asking for Trobles. No, it is Trobles. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, but again, uh, wonderful gentleman. Uh, Christian Strain was great. Uh... I, all of all of my interviews, in addition to doing the interview, I sat around and talked with all of these people. I picked their brains on things. Um, with Christian Strain, I was telling him about a, a game that I'm designing, and and he was he was he was he was a really nice guy. He was just a great guy. We had we had a wonderful wonderful interview, wonderful talk, and that went really well. Was there anything else we did on Wednesday? Or was that basically it for day zero? I don't believe we did anything else. Okay, so then day. Oh well, that was the. You didn't do anything else. That was the day I went exploring. Oh, go far, ahead. Far, I um, I was looking on my phone. You were with Aaron, though, for well, that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we go with our friend Aaron every year. And while he was doing one of his interviews, um, there was like a little bodega a couple blocks down that I wanted to go check out. Because I forgot to bring um, like like uh, Nature Valley bars or mm. whatever. I was, I was looking for different things. They had Nature Valley bars, so that's... Yeah. why I ended up getting those but like I was just looking for snacks that weren't terrible but also weren't like the healthy snacks that just don't taste good <laughs> you know no matter how much planning you do you always forget one thing yeah always. we had we had a lot of stuff going on the day the the few days before we were preparing to leave and I just I just it just slipped my mind to bring provisions basically so on Wednesday night, I was looking on, on the maps on my phone, and I'm like, oh, there's a, a convenience store like two and a half blocks away. So while you were doing your interviews, we went and walked to this convenience store. And it was it was nice. It was tiny. Um, they had adequate stuff. I mean, a lot of candy bars, but they did have healthier things. So then uh, we went to bed. We, we stayed in the... JW Marriott, right? Yes. First time in the JW Marriott. It's it's connected, but it is the furthest away hotel that's still connected by a walking bridge because you actually <laughs> have to walk through like two walking bridges to get to it. It's all the way at the end. I shouldn't complain. It was very close. It was over a walking bridge. You didn't even have to go outside and didn't have to cross traffic to get into the convention center. It's just the first time we've stayed in a hotel that was so close it was connected by a walking bridge. And overall, I would say the hotel was very nice. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they had a very nice restaurant. Yes. The breakfast was really good. 
um, Lynn didn't like that the breakfast buffet was a little expensive, but you were ordering regular food, and yeah, it was, like, really it, extravagant. It, it's just that, I mean, their breakfast buffet was, like, $22, mm. and even on a good day, I am not going to eat $22 worth of food in one sitting. I like, did. It's just... <laughs> It's just, I can't eat that much. So it was not worth it for myself to get the buffet. But I ordered off the menu yes. and I got I got stuff that was cheaper and I it was larger than what I was expecting for the price. I got the oatmeal, which was like $8 or something. And oatmeal, you think it's going to be basic. And it was like, yeah, I was just going by, by the buffet price. I was thinking I was going to get like this tiny overpriced oatmeal. But I got... Um, it was big. It was like probably. It's a good size ball. Yeah. If if you make like instant oatmeal, it was probably the amount of like six instant packets in there. I mean, I couldn't finish it. And then on top of that, the the ball came on like a wooden plank, which then also had like four little mason jars. Yeah. There was a there was like brown sugar, fresh fruit, um, dried cranberries and raisins, and then um, some kind of nut. Mm. It was a different nut. I got it twice. Mm -hmm. The first day was like walnuts, and the second day was a different type of nut. Which, like, when she ordered the oatmeal, I'm thinking, oh, this is so basic. It's going to come very, yeah. you know, just... <laughs> and, I, like, when it came, I was like, wow. I was like, I've never seen oatmeal look so, you know, amazing. It just... it, it was, And she's, like, dumping all the toppings in. And yeah, like, the first day I just dumped everything in there because I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just, well, let's get some dry fruits, some fresh fruits, some the, nuts. This, the second day... A little day bit of brown I, sugar. The second day I was more discerning. I just dumped in the stuff I really liked. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was cool. It was really neat. And then I got the buffet the first day. I, I ordered um, a breakfast burger the second time. But it was... It was um, very tasty food. I really liked it. I thought it was a good good place. The room in the JW Marriott was very nice. Uh, we had a couple of minor issues, but the issues we had, we were able to call them down to them at the desk, and they took care of them. They were like, "Oh, we'll do, we'll take care of that right away." Mm -hmm. Like we needed, uh, they had all down pillows. Lynn is allergic to feathers. I called them, and like uh, maybe twenty minutes later, they they show up at the door, knock on the door, and they say, "Here are some synthetic fiber pillows for you." We had a, um, a minor issue where uh, there must have been a loose connection. That One time we came back from the hotel and the toilet was leaking a bit of water. It wasn't major. It was a little bit. We called them. They sent workmen right up. They took care of it in like 15 minutes and it was done. So they, they were very attentive. Uh, very good service from their help desk. Mm -hmm. The room was lovely. The restaurant in the hotel was very nice. And they had a lot of extra space. For people gaming people were gaming at tables that were just out on like the second and third and first floors i did that in a weird order but on the first second and third floors there were people gaming the entire convention and they had entire rooms dedicated to gaming in addition to having events in their hotel so i would i mean what would you say about the jw marriott yeah i was pretty happy with it um it may have been a poor decision on our part to park on the complete other side of the convention center. But that's not the conv that's not the hotel's yeah. fault. Yeah, that was just because their 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 parking was quite expensive per night. Yes. So we decided to park in a garage that was actually quite close to it was across Capitol Avenue. Yeah, very and close to the convention. So center. it was it was really convenient, you know, on the day. On the days when we were buying a lot of games, we would just pop across Capitol, dump everything in the car, and that was it. But, like, trudging from the the hotel to the car with stuff... Yeah, it was a, a little bit, bit of a trap. It was a bit much. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that's the only downside I could say is that their, their parking was overpriced. Yeah. Other than that, I would say the hotel was, was pretty good. I, I'm pretty positive about the JW Marriott. I really enjoyed staying there. I would stay there again. Mm-hmm. So I might try to see if we could find parking closer to there. Yeah, find another cheaper yeah. garage that was maybe by them. Yeah, but I mean, like, once we were parked, yeah. we were like, ah, oh, whatever, we'll leave the car there. It's not that, it wasn't that big a deal, you know? So then, okay, so day one, we went and we do, as we always do, the rush. Because we get a rush from the rush. <laughs> now, if you are not familiar with the rush, the rush is... Every day at Gen Con, people are waiting outside the door for it to open, packed in like sardines. The doors open, and people fast walk, not run, because you can't run, but people fast walk to get the new releases. And some people will, some of the booths will sparse out the new releases so they have some for each day. So there's a rush every day. Mm -hmm. 
We always do the rush on Thursday, the very first day. And we try to get all the... Uh, and we got most of the things that we really wanted. I think there were three we didn't get a hold of. Is that right? Yeah. So we. Um, do you want to talk about your rush experience first or should I talk about mine first? Um, I guess I'll go first. Okay, so go ahead. What happened with you now? We were on opposite sides of the exhibit hall. You were all the way to the left. I was all the way to the yes. right. So we didn't see each other until we meet, met up again told the, all, at all the way at the end well, of the rush. I had planned to, uh, when the doors open, go straight up the um, aisle that was right there. Mm -hmm. When they opened the doors, I saw that there was no aisle right there. Whoops. Paizo was this huge chunk in front of the doors. So you go in and you had to choose either left or right. Did it look like there was an aisle on the map or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just... Misread thought, it? Yeah, maybe I just thought there was going to be an aisle. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> so, you had to go, so the first thing you had to do was go around so, Paizo. So... I was originally going to go to Simon first, mm -hmm. but I realized I was sort of towards the left and I would have had to cut across all these people. So, and I was like, oh, they're always crazy busy anyway. I'll just skip them, whatever. I'll go back to them. And if the things are there, great. If they're not, whatever. So I skipped them and I went, I went to the left and I went to Aries first mm -hmm. and there was no one there. I was the first person online. That, well, because you <laughs> went right there. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and then, uh, then I went to Mattel and there was like one person online in front of me and that, this was like my entire, my entire experience with my stuff. Like there was either a limited pe amount of people or like no one online for all of my things. I, I went back to Simon at the end and there was a bit of a line. Um, once I got in, they didn't have the things I was looking for and, mm. But I mean, and then the only line I really stood on was when you sent me to pick up Root. Um, right, because you were, well, you were, uh, the way we do it is we each do our own rush. And whoever runs out first sends a question mark and a text to the other person. They send back a booth number. We have each other's rush list and we go and pick that up. So she was done early because she had shot through all her stuff, didn't get the games at CMON. Also, you thought they were out of sign and then didn't oh, get it. Oh, yeah, I, at Tasty Minstrel, um... They had the game I was looking for, like, under the cash register, like, displayed under the cash register, and there was someone standing in front of it. So I didn't see it. So but I'm going to get yeah, that for you later for the holiday. It was, yeah. it's the Chimera Station game. It's a couple years old. It wasn't a big deal. It wasn't, like, being a new release. Yeah, I'll get a few, I'll get a few for one of your holiday gifts. Yeah. You'll have it later. And the, the Simon stuff we'll get for each other for the holiday, too. We, so we missed it, Simon. We didn't get, um... Gizmos. Way, Gizmos, you wanted, and I wanted Way of the Panda. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get those for each other later. I'll be fine. And then, um, so then I sent you, you sent me a question mark, mm -hmm. and I sent you the number to... Um, leader Games. Leader Games for, for Root. Yes. Then we kind of met up, and we went... I went to Gray Fox for you, too. And you went to Gray Fox, and then also you went to... Um, whatchamacallit, where they had uh, Lucky's Misadventures. Yeah, I don't remember the name. I don't remember the name of the company. It's a tiny little <laughs> company. So you went to Lucky. You, so then you went to, and th there wasn't much of a line at any of those no, places. No, there is. Root was the only time I was standing in line, and it wasn't even for that long. And they had a, they had um, tons of Root, but they actually ran out by Saturday. I couldn't believe it because so many people wanted to get a copy of Root. I mean, it was it was they had uh, pallet after pallet of the game, and they still managed to sell out. So, wow, was there a lot of good buzz about that game. So, for my uh, experience, so I was all the way to the right. And um, the first booth I went to when the doors opened was Ravensburger. And it was to get Woodlands, which you you were very psyched about. So, I was the second person in line at Ravensburger. I went right up and I grabbed Root. And this is one of the tips I want to throw out to you people uh, going to Gen Con, thinking of going to Gen Con. They gave me a discount for paying in cash. For God's sakes, bring cash. Some people do that. Yeah, and, they, I, won't, they won't charge you tax. And also, some people, some people will, uh, in, in, at certain booths, will, in addition to, to giving discounts for cash, some some places, if there's a big line, they'll be like, "Who's who's got cash? Who's got cash?" And they'll let you jump the line because there's only a couple registers who take mm -hmm. card, but anyone can grab your cash and give you the game and be like, "If you don't need a receipt, you can go." Mm -hmm. So then I went to. Renegade. 
Now, I want to preface this by saying I'm a big fan of Renegade Games. They are a company that, in my opinion, is one of those ones that I am a fan of, like I said before with uh, when we were talking about Atlas. And the reason I'm a fan of Renegade is they came out of nowhere as a tiny little company, and they have been very smart about what games they publish. They've had hit after hit after hit, and they have, they have done some games that have really, really been very positive experiences for us and are going to stay in our collection for many years to come. Games like Lanterns and Ex Libris and Fox in the Forest. These are just fantastic games that we have really enjoyed. But, man, I, I, I don't think they do a very good job of organizing how to run their convention booth because every year they have giant big hit releases and they're they have these lines that are just that are getting longer faster than they're they than they're checking people out so i get to their booth and their line snakes through the booth and then wraps around the booth which it was a big booth so i get on the line and it's not moving it's going very slowly and i counted eight volunteers they had keeping the line in order all they were doing was making sure the line didn't get out of hand and i we we snake around the booth and we get into the booth and start snaking through the booth it literally goes back and forth and they had a cool thing they were doing this i'm going to give them props for they were giving out tickets for the big release games but it wasn't every game i was there for a game that wasn't one of the big mm -hmm. release games so I couldn't get a ticket to make sure I would get one. But for some of the people who are the big release ones, if they could say, oh, we're out of tickets for that, you're not going to be able to get one. At least they'd know. Yeah. And they didn't waste their time. But, I mean, we get we get into the booth. And I say we because Aaron was with me. So Aaron and I get into the booth and we're snaking through the booth. And I was commenting to him. And I said, man, this line is so long. And one of the people they had keeping track of the line says, to says, oh, but it's moving quickly. And I said, that's not true. <laughs> he, he didn't really talk to me after that. But, you know, I mean, it's like, come on. I have eyes. I'm there. I can see the line is not moving quickly. You're just going to, like, like lie to me and, you know, I mean, forgive, forgive the expression, but don't pee in my pocket and tell me it's raining, okay? I got up there. I got my, my game. But, you know, while I was waiting there, I could have missed other games that were on my list. But I got my game. I came around to the register. By the time I got to the front, I could see the reason it was moving so slow is they had two people. Two people ringing people up. Two is not enough for someone who is uh, running so many um, big release games, has so many cool things coming out at Gen Con. Two people ringing people up is not enough. And when we got to the front, they finally had a third person who was just taking cash-only people. And then it sped up the line, you know, 50% more from the two people. So then the next um, the next thing I went to, I went to go get, um, uh, I went to get um, the uh, uh, game Everdell. Mm -hmm. There was not much of a line at all. They had a bunch of people ringing people up. When I went and got it. A immediately after that, I went to get uh, Reef, which... That was a big release. Their company also had just uh, put out um, Century Eastern Wonders. They had an enormous line, even bigger than Renegade's line. So I get on that line there and I'm thinking to myself, oh man, it's going to be a repeat performance. But then the line just starts moving and it doesn't stop. I mean, it just moves and moves and moves. It was twice as long as Renegade's line, spent half the time on it. And I get to the front, I see why. They had six people ringing people up. And that's how you do it when you have a bunch of big releases. You should have a bunch of people who are able at least to take cash only. And that's what they were doing. They had only a couple people who could take card, but they had six total people because they had like four people just being like, you got cash? Get over here. And they ring you right up and out you went. And then at that point, we had met up because you went to go mm -hmm. get um, Root. And then we, we together kind of went and got... Um, Lucky's Misadventures, and you had also on your own after Root gone and gotten um, uh, Multi Universum from mm -hmm. Gray Fox. So that was it for our rush. So what are your thoughts um, on the uh, the rush this year and the lines and the? Um, well, this year for me was the complete opposite of last year. Where I was, I got everything for you. Yeah, and you, were stuck you, on lines. you got no lines, and then I had like line after line after line last year. So yeah. I, I mean. 
So you had an easier experience of it this yeah, time? Yeah, it was... I guess Aries didn't have any big uh, releases because last year they I had, got well, stuck on their line and it took forever. No, they had a couple of good ones. But you know what the thing was? You went to them first before there was a line. The first one... I mean, the very first booth you go to, if you're, if you're close enough to the front... You're going to get there before the line forms. It's the second booth and on that you, you might have trouble. I don't remember who I went to first last year. They were mm. pretty close to the... They were the first or second last year that I went to. And there was still a big line. Yeah. Okay, that's... That is fair. So, um... Let's see. Now, I, I, I... Of course, again, I love Renegade games, but I really think they need to do better... Uh, they need they they should have five people controlling the line, not eight, and they should have five people ringing people up, not two. So, but I, I mean, yeah, and you know what, guys, if you guys are renegade, hear this from me. I love you. I love your games. I love your company. You're one of my favorite companies out there. But please do a little better job in the future at, at conventions, especially because you always release such amazing games and. And, you know, we just don't want to spend the whole con waiting in line for your games. That's it. I mean, we want to get your games so we can play your games and get other people's games, too. Mm -hmm. So, okay. But other than that, I would say the, the rush went pretty well. We yeah. went and dropped off our stuff. And then we came back and we did a lot of uh, just walking around the exhibit hall and filming and buying things. And I would say Thursday was really packed in the exhibit hall. It was very busy. But... Um, but it was a good, it was a good, uh, experience doing a lot of shopping and walking around the exhibit hall. We walked like 10 miles on Thursday, just walking around and buying things. And we got most of what we wanted. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your impression of the shopping experience in the exhibit hall on Thursday? Uh, yeah, it was, we got, I think we did most of our shopping on Thursday. Most of, well, at least half of it. Mm -hmm. Probably more than half though. You're right. Probably most. Yeah, we did a, we did a lot. Um, and yeah, and then we we uh, dumped stuff off, and yeah. then we came back and we did it several times. Yeah, yeah. We went in, we bought stuff, we we got we dropped it off somewhere. We came back and bought more stuff, mm -hmm. and we did a lot of filming in the exhibit hall that yeah. day too, which um, was a little tough at times just because how crowded it was on Thursday. It was it was I think it was probably the most crowded Thursday, uh, at least up there is one of the most crowded Thursdays I've ever seen. Thursday was was packed. So then, um, anything else you want to talk about about the shopping? No. Well, one thing I did want to say was that uh, everybody at all the booths was very nice. We did. We had had in the past. There were a couple times uh, years ago where there was at least one or two occasions where people were were rude to one of us. But I didn't have any of that. Everyone was very professional and very nice. I didn't have anyone uh, be rude to me. Did you have anyone be rude no. to? No. So every everything. The, the experience of dealing with them on a consumer and seller basis was, was lovely. Everybody was great. Uh, so then Thursday night, we went and we did the interview with Eduardo Baraf. Mm -hmm. And you got to tell him how much of a big fan of his uh, design for Murder of Crows you mm -hmm. are. And we interviewed him. That should be already be up as well. We interviewed him. Uh, well, I interviewed him. You were, you were sitting. I was you, just sitting. But you, you talked to him. Uh, before and after the interview. Mm -hmm. But we hung out with him and we, we interviewed him about um, his upcoming game, Skulk Hollow. Mm -hmm. Which, oh my God, check out this game when it is on Kickstarter. The game's not even out yet. I am a big fan of a game. It's not even released. I want this game so bad. It looks so cool. The art is amazing. The game design is so cool. It's asymmetrical. You're a bunch of anthropomorphic foxes or a giant monster and the two of you fight each other and it's so bizarre and cool and the foxes have to climb up the monster to take out its arm or, or incapacitate its jaws and if you take out a part of it it can't use that to do an attack anymore it looks so good then oh we had one more event on thursday yeah i believe it was the parsley thing wasn't it yes now the muffins a parsley adventure muffins a parsley adventure now i don't know now who... now that makes sense before we were like what, what is, is that <laughs> yeah i was hypothesizing we're walking around we thought it was about a cat yeah because muffins totally sounds like a cat's name right, right? no yeah, like... it, it's about actual muffins like muffins that you eat yeah so <laughs> zucchini muffins to be exact <laughs> oh there was zucchini muffins yes so okay it was run by um Mr. Looney, who, who owns Looney Labs, who back in the day designed 
the all, all of the Pyramid Arcade games, which now are released in one giant box set called Pyramid Arcade, as well as um, he was the, the he's the designer of the mega hit game for him. It's been out forever and has had like fifty iterations. Um, Flux, which everybody knows, Flux. Mm -hmm. I mean, Flux has been out forever, and they've done like fifty versions of Flux. We have like ten of them. So the guy is is really funny, and, and he's he showed up in a lab coat. Well, because well, at his booth, it's <laughs> yeah, Looney Labs. They I all know. wear lab coats. I know. I just thought it was funny. But he was a lovely guy. He ran a great event. He was making lots of jokes and laughing with us. And, I mean, he made it amazingly fun. Mm -hmm. And now, I don't know who created the whole Parsley system, but, like, the next day you found a book of the Parsley system, mm -hmm. and it thanks him. So maybe he created it, and then he gave permission for someone else to write yeah, it down? Maybe. Because uh, there's a thank you to him in the book. Yes, there is. So I think he might have come up with it because he's been doing these events forever. Yeah, because he didn't have the book. He had just he just had, he had like notes. he just had like sheets of loose paper that he, that were like three ring binded together. So like I, it was totally like homemade. <laughs> so I think this is my hypothesis, and feel free to comment down below if I'm incorrect. But my hypothesis is that he came up with the idea. He started doing it at conventions because we always see it in the convention list, but we never we've never done it until this mm -hmm. year. And then, and then someone else asked him if they could make a book of it, and he gave them permission. That's my theory. Yeah. Now, that being said, it was awesome. And I recommend to you, if you uh, are someone old enough to remember the old text-based adventure games mm -hmm. from the old computer days where it just told you, you're in a room, to the north is a window, to the east is a door, to the south is a muffin... <laughs> if you remember those games and then it says what do you want to do and you type in what you want to do that's what this was just this... with the person being the computer yes you would tell him and... what you wanted to do and he would either it... say you couldn't do that or tell you what happened when you did do it <laughs> and we were all cooperatively playing as the player together we would each take a turn to do a command and and one thing that was brilliant two people brought pen and paper and were writing out maps to see how everything connected. And then we kept re referring to those two ladies yep. to say, okay, which way do I need to go? I didn't I didn't think to do that just because I kept on thinking I was misinterpreting the the little blurb mm. that the um, Gen Con website gives you. Because it I, said it was like a yeah, text-based I mean, adventure. It said it was a text-based adventure where a person is going to be the computer and everyone who attends are going to be, you know, the people who give commands. And that's exactly what it was. But I don't know, I don't know why I kept thinking like, oh no, it can't be that. But it was, it, <laughs> but was, it, was. it was that and it was awesome. <laughs> if you are a, were a fan back in the day or still are a fan of the text-based adventures and you get a chance to try one of the Parsley adventures... Uh, run by is his first name Andrew? Is it Andrew? I Looney? think it is. Jump at it! It was a great time. We had an amazing time. We we both walked out of there going that was way better than we expected it to be. Uh, I don't know what we were expecting because we didn't really know what it was, but that was really fun. Now was that our final event on? I believe it was on Thursday. So day one closed with that. We went back to the hotel. Uh, we got a good night's sleep, which another big recommend. Don't overbook yourself. Get enough time for sleep and eating when and you're at, showering. and showering. Yes, yes. <laughs> one one shower a day, three meals a day, and at least six to seven hours of sleep a day. Um, maybe more towards the end if you're if you're not getting enough earlier. But mm -hmm. you, you got to do that at the con. So day two, uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. Friday was Friday the one where I had the press event early and you yes. went off shopping. Yes. So I um so. Aaron and I went to a press event for a couple of games being published by a um, European company that are based on video games from Paradox Interactive. So uh, the games are not out yet. They've, uh, they've, they've been, I think one has already been kickstarted and the other is going to be kickstarted. So they were, they, these were like prototype versions of the game. One is, was for Crusader Kings and the other was for Europa Universalis. Now they had it, the event. It was a little press event, and they had they were running it out of the private dining room, in the back of the Spoken Steel. Now one of the coolest. Now check out the videos I put out for these, because I've already published them at this point. I'm pretty sure by the time this video comes out, and the event was awesome. 
the waitress led me through a secret passage to get to the demo room. I forgot to tell you about that. There was a secret passage. <laughs> I video I videoed it. It was amazing. This place was so cool. The spoke and the steel was so cool. I want to go back there and eat there one day because it was such a cool restaurant. Was it like a bootlegging place back in the day? I don't know, but there was a secret passage to the wall. She goes, oh, we go through here. I said, what? It's a wall. She opens the wall. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I said, close that and do it again. I need to get it on film. <laughs> it was so cool. So then after I was there, I told everybody about it. They hadn't seen the secret passage. I said, I said, did they bring you guys through the secret passage to get here? And they all looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and I said, come here. And I brought them over and I showed them the secret passage. And everybody was like, that's the coolest freaking thing. So the demos were awesome. I went in there thinking this was going to be cool. Maybe some people on the channel will be interested in checking out what these games are about because they will be coming, you know, to, to retail at some point. Um, but I didn't know how interested I was going to be in them. And I thought I was going to be more interested in Crusader Kings. So first, um, the designer of Crusader Kings shows it to us, and I was interested in it. I was like, okay, this is really cool. And it, you go through several families of a, of a European royal house during the crusading time period, and, and, and it was really awesome, and, and you can do political marriages and war, start wars, and, and it looked really fun. And then uh, and I had some, some snacks while I was there. And then uh, the designer of Europa Universalis took us through that game. And oh my God, is it amazing looking also. You can go through um, a bunch of different wars. They have all different scenarios, but it plays like a real historical European version of Twilight Imperium, except that because of the different scenarios, you can pick different scales to play it on, and they have some versions which play in like 90 minutes. He's like, if you want to play a big grand one, you play the Hundred Year Wars between like Britain and France, and that can be huge. But if you want to play a smaller one, you can play out like the little city-state wars in Italy, and that can go 90 minutes. And I was like, oh my god, I want to have this game. <laughs> it was it was so cool. Um, check out those videos if you're interested in either Europa Universalis or Crusader Kings. I was very impressed. Uh, you, what did you do while I was doing that? I, um, I went back to the exhibit hall, mm -hmm. and I walked around a bit. I, that's when I bought um, the new version of Once Upon a Time. Was that also when they showed you the demo of the yeah. breakdancing game? Yeah, I bought uh, the new version of the of Once Upon a Time and a bunch of expansions. And then they showed me um, the Break It Up a Notch. Uh, they demoed it for me. They just it was in just like a little a little zip bag like You're, under the counter. <laughs> we, we found out about this from Travis Winter during our interview with him. He told us about Break It Up a Notch. After the interview, Lynn had come back from her bodega experience, and I said, tell her about Break It Up a Notch, because I knew you would love it, and you squeed. I did. And then he was like, he was like, you know what, We're, we have a demo copy. He goes, I'll make sure someone will show it to you tomorrow, come by the booth. Yeah, they didn't, there, there's, uh, they didn't have, you know, the app with the music or anything, mm. but she showed me, you just take a handful of meeples, and you... You roll them like you, dice? You roll them like dice. <laughs> And if they land on their head or their side or their feet, that's a specific dance move. If they oh, land flat okay. on their back, that's nothing. Mm. And then you have some cards in front of you where you have to get like two upright meeples and like one on their side. This is what we gotta check out when it comes and out. Yeah, and, and you don't, um, as you roll them, you can, you know, when you get the moves, you can put them on your card and then, you know, you keep rolling the mm -hmm. ones that don't have the don't land how you need them to and then as soon as you fill up a card you yell something and okay it looks it looks interesting yeah. and i know how much you love break dancing stuff so was there anything else you did while i was at that I'm, event with aaron i'm trying i mean i walked around a bunch i ate some delicious jamaican food mm. the food um, trucks oh good assortment of food i love the food trucks you, i think that was my first visit to the jamaican food truck this it year. was not your last it was not my last <laughs> lynn loves jamaican food <laughs> I, on like the last day, because I, I went twice to the Jamaican yeah. food truck, but on the last day specifically, we walk up to the food truck and the lady taking orders says, you've been here a few times before. And then we get around to the side to pick up our food. And the guy from the, the kitchen in the back of the food truck gives it to her. He goes, I know you. <laughs> yeah. Like they all knew her because she was like living at the Jamaican yes. food truck. <laughs> Pretty much. Which I... <laughs> The Blue Lagoon food truck, because there there was another Jamaican food truck. Okay, shout out to the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> Your curry goat was amazing. Oh my God. 
Yeah, there were a lot of really good food trucks. So just, you know, a general shout out. The Venezuelan food truck, I loved. Um, there, there, were, there, there were some that were, were okay. There were some where I was like, I went there and I was like, oh, I enjoyed what I had. It was good. But there were some. Like, the, I think that for me, the two best were the Jamaican and the Venezuelan one. They were really fantastic. The food was out of this world. Um, oh, but also what about that, like, that barbecue one that was doing the mac and cheese covered in pulled pork? Oh, yeah. Oh, they were really good too. And was, didn't we, did we get, am I imagining things, or did we get we, mac and cheese on a sandwich? No, we got uh, grilled cheese. There was, had, a, there was a grilled cheese truck. Yes, but I got, got mac and cheese okay. on the grilled cheese. Well, I, I didn't. Oh, you got something different? Yeah. No, that, that truck was really good, too. So, no, there were a lot of really good food trucks. I, I try to eat at the food trucks a lot because there's so much variety in a short amount of area, and, um, and they're freaking great. So, oh, where were we, though? What day were we on here? Friday. Friday. So... Uh, so Friday we, I did the demo, you would, went and did shopping yes. and we, we got some lunch. Mm -hmm. Then what did we do in the afternoon on Friday? That we, what was the next, uh, event? Well, Friday night was, uh, the AEG game night. Um, there was something, oh, the film block. Mm -hmm. Okay. So last year we did the sci-fi film block and it was okay. This year we did the comedy film block and it was funny. There were a couple duds. There was one that was like very two guys with a GoPro and no acting talent, and but and then the, but, well, there were there were some that they weren't bad, but they weren't comedy. No, like they had a couple funny parts, but they were weird. Rather. But it was it was it should not have been the comedy film block, but it also it wasn't. But it was quality. Yeah, it wasn't bad. It's just there was only one that I thought was bad. There was one because mm -hmm. it, like I said, it was like two guys with a GoPro and no acting talent, and it it, it wasn't good. But most of them were good and funny. There were there were a couple where I was laughing out loud. I was guffawing. Um, that one with the time machine uh, clothes washer was hilarious. I was dying. Uh, also, the one with the comic book artist. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there was this comic book artist who couldn't bring himself to draw anything but dinosaurs. And it was, <laughs> you're, you're chuckling right now thinking about it. It was funny. So, no, that was pretty good. It was only, what was that, an hour, two hours? I think it was two hours. Two hours. And that, that was worth it. You know, if you get a chance, if you're doing running around and doing a lot of shopping and game events at Gen Con, those film blocks are a good way to take a load off for a little while. Mm -hmm. So it was nice. We sat down, we watched them, we, we all enjoyed it. It was good. They're not, um, they're usually not too long. The longest one was uh, like 20 minutes. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, I think that was the one with the, um, the, 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 the furry costume one. It was like, because yeah, that one went on the uh, longest. Yeah, but they're, they're... It was a good one, though. Yeah, they range... I think the comedies ranged anywhere from six minutes to 20 minutes. Yeah, some of them so were really if, short. If one... If you're not really liking one, it's going to be over pretty soon. Yeah. So then we went and we did... That was the... AG AG game, game night. So, okay. So, first thing. We get to AG game night. Well, they've streamlined it now. You don't need to wait in line and everything. Yeah, no, it's, it's much better yeah. organized. That's the, yeah, great way to start. Mm -hmm. The organization of the AG game night has improved over the years and it's getting much better. You just come in, you sit down, someone teaches you how to play a game, you play the game. They have great volunteers there who know how to play the games already. You sit with them and they teach the game. I want to give a shout out. I don't, unfortunately, don't know your names, but I want to give a shout out to. The gentleman who taught us how to play War Chest, and the love, and the um, the lady who taught us how to play um, space base, because space base. they were both awesome. They were both very knowledgeable. Um, they had good senses of humor, and they helped us learn very quickly. So first, we we ran into uh, one of my viewers who I actually met originally at Gen Con, uh, Brian. I want to mm -hmm. give a shout out to Brian. Brian, you're awesome. He's a really great guy to play games with, and Brian and and. Lynn and Aaron and I sat down and played War Chest, which needs to be two or four players. And we, because we were so evenly matched, we played a much longer game than the game is intended to be played at. People kept joking around about it, like, are you guys still playing? But it was great. We all had a good time. Lynn and I immediately were like, we're going to get this game tomorrow if it's not in the swag box this year. Um, then by, that, by the end of the game, our friends from Scotland had showed up and wanted to play a game with us. So we said goodbye to Brian. Uh, he was uh, great. He, I, I really like playing with, with people like that who are who are have a good sense of humor. Uh, never are a gloating winner or a sore loser. 
he's like the exact person you want to game with. Mm-hmm. Like if he lived local, I'd be inviting him over for beer and board game nights all the time. So we separated from Brian though, and we went on with our friends from Scotland. So I want to give a shout out to them because they are also those kinds of people. Mm-hmm. So specifically, uh, we were playing with our friend Andrew and our friend Fraser. Um, we have another friend from Scotland who's also there, James, but he didn't, uh, he wasn't around at, at big game night. No. I think he was doing something else. So we all got together and we played the game, um, space base and we had a blast and it was a great time. And then after we played that and they were all, again, they were the, exactly the kind of people you want to hang out and play a game with. And again, if they lived local, they'd be over for being board game nights with me every week. And then we went on and we got our, uh, it was getting late by that point, mm-hmm. and we got our swag box. So now the swag box quality has gone up and down over the years. It used to be when the event was more expensive, it was like the most amazing legendary mm-hmm. thing ever. Then when they first dropped the cost down the first year, it was lousy. But then last year it went back up again. Last year it was pretty good. So now this year we got four games in the swag box. Help me out. What did we get? Um, Junta Las Cartas. Las Cartas. Las Cartas. Uh, train maker. Train maker. Uh, we got uh, something kingdoms. Greedy kingdoms. Greedy kingdoms. And the treehouse, the magic treehouse. Yes, I'm, I'm magical not... treehouse. Is it magical treehouse? Magical treehouse. That's a book series. <laughs> magic so, treehouse. Yes, yeah, magical <laughs> magical treehouse. Now, um, some of these were games that I wasn't weren't even on my radar. So we'll see. We'll see how they are. We, I, haven't, I, we haven't played any haven't, of them. I haven't played any of them yet. Some of them were games that the name sounded interesting and I might have looked closer at them at the AEG booth the next day. So there's some of them. I mean, I would say I was really hoping that either Space Space or War Chest were going to be in there and neither was. So this isn't the worst AEG swag box, but it's not the best either. I would say it's better than that year when it went to total crap, but it's not as good as last year. And it's kind of unfair to compare it to when they were more expensive to mm-hmm. get into the... Because it's part of your ticket price. It used to be 10 bucks more, so it's really not fair to compare it to that when it was super legendary mm-hmm. what they gave you. But it's still better from that year when everybody was like, oh my god, what happened to the AEG swag box? Mm-hmm. So it's still better than that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll have to try the games and we'll see if they're any good. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I mean, the train game and the Junta Las Cartas don't really interest me. Just, but, but, I mean, I don't know anything about them. I'm just not into trains. Yeah. And the theme of the card game doesn't thrill me at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, um, I want to try the, the train one, but I'm with you on the Las Cartas. But, uh, I mean, like, uh, the, the Greedy Kingdoms and the Magical Treehouse one at least look, they, they look more interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I would have bought them. But I, I would have maybe demoed them. Or checked them out. Or yeah. Read the back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see if they're any good. And we've got some... Uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway of one of those because we've actually got two copies of all of them. And we just broke 1,000 subscribers while, while we were at Gen Con. So there is a giveaway. I promised a giveaway when we broke 1,000 subscribers. I may do a few giveaways actually spaced out over time. So stay tuned for those. Um, but one of them is definitely going to be given away for passing a thousand subscribers shortly, but I'm going to do it with the review. So I have to play one of them enough to review it. And then in the review, I will be doing the giveaway. So then we went, we went back to the hotel and we crashed. Yeah. That was when we had the leaky toilet. <laughs> yeah. But, but they took care of it <laughs> they really took fast. Care of it, yeah. Very quick. I mean, we called and like five minutes later, they were there. I'm like, yeah, you have that, a problem? That was the only night where we really didn't get enough sleep because AEG game night runs to midnight. And then we had the leaky toilet when we got back mm. and then we had an RPG at 9am the next morning. Okay. So we went to the RPG yeah. Saturday morning mm-hmm. and it went from 9am to one. Yes. Now, what is the name of that, ro- that role playing Fear game? itself is the system. Yes. So now this this is a very narrative based RPG. You use one six sided die and only on a once in a while. Yeah. And you can and, and you're you're um I don't know if it was just this one game, but it seemed to be that you're just a normal your normal person in a horror that, movie that can do normal person things. Yeah. You're not like a super super badass spy that can you know so we, do all these amazing things. You're just like. Yeah. You're normal. <laughs> and, and and you have stats, and your stats are basically like consumables. You can lower your stat permanently to boost a die roll. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it played pretty fun. I thought it was interesting. Everyone we were playing with, though, were awesome. We had some great role players in the group who really hammed it up. I love when I play with people like this in a role-playing game, where they get into character, they put on... Uh, 
a different speech pattern than they normally have. Like this, this one, uh, this one of the other role players, she was playing like a teenage girl and she was kind of doing like a valley girl thing a little yeah. bit. It was, it was great. She was like, she had me rolling. Um, and this other character kept saying, this other guy, he kept saying that his character was based on Judd Nelson and he kept doing Judd Nelson type thing. From the Breakfast Club. The, oh yes, I'm sorry, you're right. Yes, Judd, Judd. Nelson from the Breakfast yeah. Club, yeah. So, um, no, but everybody was great. Mm -hmm. uh, you were playing a, 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 a much younger, like, teenage boy. I was probably at least 16 because my character sheet said I could drive. So. Right. There was another character who was playing a young kid, too, mm -hmm. and you guys were, were hamming it up as being, like, little kids. Yeah, and... we were, like, the the outcast from our group. No. I, I was playing the <laughs> saucy French foreign exchange student, and um, I played her very saucy. And uh, I, I had a running gag I was cracking people up with where I kept I kept doing random French phrases as as exclamations. It started with me saying sacre bleu. And then I, I thought it was funny. I started saying other things. So I said, Charles de Gaulle and Gerard Depardieu and, and things like that. I was being silly. But, um, it, you know, it's it, uh, I basically I mean, he I think the characters were based off of various 80s movies. Mm -hmm. I think my character is based off of the French foreign exchange student from Better Off Dead. Okay. So I tried to kind of go with that. So like I, I tried to play her like that, um, and it was cool. I mean, I I enjoy playing that character. I had a lot of fun with it, being the, you know, um, being the only person who was actually not from the country they were in. I, I got to be very fish out of water, and it mm -hmm. was fun. Uh, and it was. What did you think of that that experience? I thought it was pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. And the game master was very good too. Yes. He did a good job. He 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 wove a good story, yeah. and the players were great. And we had a we had a really good time mm -hmm. with that. That was your pick, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, it was a good pick. So then we went and got lunch. And then did we go back in the exhibit hall a little bit? We may have. I think we did. I think we went and we did a little shopping. And then what else did we have on Friday? I think we had one oh, other event. Oh, that was Saturday, John. Oh, Saturday, Saturday. Oh, Saturday, I think, was when I, I bought all my mystery boxes. Yes, we and went back. We, we trudged them back to the hotel. <laughs> but then we did we have another... We I think we had we had two events on Saturday. What was the second event on Saturday? After we did... We, we, we did we did the role playing game. Mm -hmm. Then we did the um, we went and did some more shopping, and we definitely had one more thing. Um, so on Saturday we went to the BGG Hot Games room yeah. in the afternoon. So now, um, okay, so that was a pick of yours too. You just wanted to try to play some of the brand new games to yeah. see if we would like them. So how long a block did we have it was two hours two hour block okay so I, we we'd done a, a regular gen con game library before yeah. but we'd never done the bgg hot game room so it's a different game library basically mm -hmm. uh it's run by board game geek and i love you board game geek you guys rock you give me a place to put my videos up other than just my channel and um so we went in we gave our tickets we went in we found a spot on a table uh aaron lynn and i and we um we picked out some games to try. Mm -hmm. So we tried... First we tried Nyctophobia. Yes. Because it was one that you were interested in. Mm -hmm. The game is interesting. But we decided not to buy it. And the reason we decided not to buy it is not... I mean, the game is very interesting. But the rules are a bit convoluted and seem to contradict each other, themselves a lot. Yeah, and there's a bunch of typos. Like, a bunch of typos. I am very <laughs> disappointed because this is one that was produced by... Um, Pandasaurus, which is another company I generally like. And I'm a little disappointed that this one made it to market when it looked like it probably needed a few more months of revisions before coming to market. They may have rushed this one out too quickly because they, they probably need to do, needed to do some revisions on the rulebook mm -hmm. before putting it out. Which made me sad because it was a very interesting concept. You have a bunch of people who wear these blackout glasses and they can't see what's going on. And they're... Like people in a horror movie trying to escape to the car while they're being chased by a killer. And the only person without the blackout glasses is the killer. And we played it and it was interesting. And once we figured out how to play it, it was interesting. But there were some things we weren't really even sure if we were playing them right. Because yeah. we found contradictory information in the rule book. Mm -hmm. So after that, we were like, okay, it's cool, but we're not going to buy it. So you won't see a review on it. This is the closest thing you're going to get to a review on Nyctophobia. And that's our opinion is... Really interesting, but it needed more time in development, which is too bad. Mm -hmm. However, then we played... The Samurai Jack game. And we were impressed. Um, so Aaron grabbed Samurai Jack because he's a big fan of the show. You are a fan of the show, but he's a big fan of the show. He's like seen every episode. 
And it was funny because I said to him, I said, oh, so you're a big fan of Samurai Jack. And he goes, well, how would you define big fan? Big fan. I said, well, have you seen every episode? He goes, well, yeah. I said, that's a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so we played Samurai Jack and it was really good. And um, it's weird. It, it, it involves hand management. Also and set collecting. And set collecting. And, and almost sort of. You got to read your opponents. Not really programming, but you got to. It kind of is a a, a little program. Yeah. But I mean, it was fun. It was really enjoyable. We had a really good time with it. And it's one of those you need to work together to defeat the big bad. But it's competitive. But but only one person is going to win the game. Yeah. But if you don't all work together to defeat the big bad, no one's going to win. So, like, I, I. These are these. Okay. I don't like a lot of cooperative games, but I love competitive games with cooperative elements and this is one of those Mm -hmm. um i like a lot of games like that so i I, we both were like oh we like this and and the next day lynn went and bought it so we got we we got a copy of that if if you um saw our whole video we saw we got a copy of samurai jack then was that it for saturday because we i think we made it an early night so we we made it an early night on saturday we went and got food we went back to the hotel and we went to sleep early and we caught up on our sleep, so we weren't hitting a wall on Sunday. And that was kind of good, because ending early let us and sleeping in a little bit. Then Sunday, we checked out of the hotel. And then we had a 10 a.m. Um, appointment to do a demo of Woodlands, which we'd already bought anyway. But we had uh, they were looking for people to do coverage on Woodlands. So we, we said, yeah, okay, we'll come. We'll come do a demo. So we made an appointment. We came in. Um... We had a demo with Florian Mm -hmm. over at uh, Ravensburger, and he was very nice. He showed us the uh, the basics of the game. Mm -hmm. Didn't like go into you know real depth on the rules, but gave us an idea of the feel of the game. And he was very good. Um, Some some of the way I think he might have been simplifying the rules Mm -hmm. because some of his the way he taught us weren't the actual rules. When we got the game and opened it. We saw that some of them were off, but I think it's because he was just simplifying it to give us the feel mm-hmm. of how the game is. So we'll do, I mean, we're going to do a full review and tutorial and show you how it actually plays. But after he did it, um, so we had my mom and my stepdad were were watching the house and the dog for us. And uh, Lynn says to me after we did, why don't you say, what did you say to me as soon as we finished the demo? Oh, I said it would be great for them to play with uh, their grandkids because... They have, um, like, a large age range. Mm. I think one's either a teenager or almost a teenager now. Mm -hmm. And then they still have, like, a little one. And the way that Woodlands works is that the tiles have an easy and advanced side. And Mm -hmm. also the stories get more difficult as you go. So you can, it's almost like you can half step up the difficulties. You can play the easy story, but with the advanced tiles. Yes. Or so, like you would play the first, the Little Red Riding Hood story. You could play with a younger kid, like eight or so, maybe even six. And before um, you know it, they're going to be beating you with the hard stories. Yeah, and and you can you know start it with the easy story, the easy tiles, and oh, they're doing that pretty well. Just flip over the tiles, and that's a little half step more difficult. You know, so we there's so, lots of variation and customization with the difficulty level. So we bought a second copy. And we, we gave it to them as a, because you, I, you know, uh, this is just another tip. If somebody house or pet sits for you, buy them a present. So we, we bought them, we bought them a game uh, to play with their grandkids that we thought they could understand. And then we opened our copy and played it with them to teach them how to play it. And they were like, yes, this is awesome. Thank you so much. This is a good game. And they said, uh, mom was immediately saying one particular grandkid, like, oh, they would love this. And, and so we, you called that one really right because mm-hmm. you were like, this is the one we should get. Because we're always out on a lookout. Like, what should we get as a present for them for thanking them to watch, uh, for watching for, uh, Fenris for us? So then we also, uh, we did some last minute shopping. Mm-hmm. We ran into Travis again over at, uh, uh, he was over talking to some friends of his at Osprey Games and we bought a game from them. And, um, and then we did a, a couple of, demos a couple other demos one scheduled one impromptu in the exhibit hall which those are probably already up by now we did a a demo of some pirate card game which looked kind of cool 
and I only didn't get because it had a minimum of three players, mm-hmm. and and there's too many games competing for that well, slot for us. It did. It was two players was the minimum, but she told us that it didn't play that well at two. And so. the, the thing was though, it seemed really fun, and mm-hmm. you know what? And I'm I'm kind of almost regretting I didn't get it because I it, it did seem really cool, but we got some other stuff, and then we also did a demo of that game uh, Hanamakoji, mm-hmm. which I'm finally saying correctly. It took me a while <laughs> to figure out how to pronounce it. But um, that was really cool. That was over at Deep Water Games. We we recorded that. That's probably already up by now. And then that was it. And then we um, we well, had yeah. lunch. We had lunch. And we I headed had back. To, I had to get my last minute Jamaican food. Before. Yeah, we had, that was that was our, our final <laughs> visit to the Jamaican food truck. I had Jamaican food too. And um, yeah, and then we then we we packed up the car, and we headed back. And that was it. Um, a little bittersweet when when you end when you leave on uh, Gen Con, but but wow, it was a really good time. So some overall thoughts on the convention. What do you think? Well, we had a we had that detour on the way back. Yeah, but right. it wasn't that big a deal. Okay. Yeah, it we, we detoured. Like, it, it wasn't, wasn't like last year. It wasn't like the last year's deep detour where it took us through like the the capital wasteland. Yeah. <laughs> so, but what are, what are some of your overall thoughts on on Gen Con twenty eighteen? Um, I think that it was probably the most restful Gen Con. Because we we paced ourselves better? We we ended early all but one night, Mm -hmm. and I was able to get, um, I also, you know, thought to ask for a pillow that I'm not allergic to every other time. You just DL usually. I just, because I mean, they like triple pillowcase that thing, and as long as there's not feathers literally on my face, like, I'm not going to stop breathing. But I always, like, if I sleep on a feather pillow, I'll, like, wake up with, like, my head feels like it's just filled with, with, I don't know what. It just, it's just terrible. (laughs) You didn't think to get the synthetic pillow. Oh, did you think? I, I, I twisted your arm to get you to get the synthetic pillow. He, he twisted my arm because, I don't know. Because you just never, you just want to always let things go. You're just like, okay, no, no, forget it. It'll be fine. Yeah, so I I was like, no, let's just give him a call. I slept a lot better not being slowly asphyxiated <laughs> during the night <laughs> that usually is good to um, not be slowly asphyxiated so that combined with with ending early on most of the days yeah, you weren't hitting one, a wall on sunday really no i was still getting cranky just because i wanted to go home but i wasn't like i wasn't like so exhausted that yeah. i was like dead on your feet yeah which you, you often are but yeah i was gonna say you know what and a lot of people will try to do as many events as possible i say no Pace yourselves. Yes, I know Gen Con only comes once a year, but if you run yourself into poor health or run yourself into the ground to the point where you're you're asleep on your feet, you're not enjoying yourself anymore. So I say, yeah, you got to get enough time to get sleep. You got to be able to eat proper meals, and you have to uh, also be able to take a shower every day. And that's just so people want to play games with you and don't want to run from you when they smell you. So, yeah, definitely. Especially because all the walking you do, you need a shower. I took a shower every night when I got back because we did like 10 miles of walking and I was like, yeah, I'm jumping in the shower because I feel like I've been wading through a swamp right now. Mm-hmm. It is very humid. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was very humid out. Very humid. But um, so what But what were your thoughts on, on enjoying Gen Con this year? Where did this rank amongst your Gen Con experience? I think it was probably one of the most enjoyable Gen Cons. Because oh, you yeah. said, last year you said it was your favorite of all time. Is last year still your favorite? I don't think so. You think, think this is better? Yeah, I think this one wow. was a little bit more, uh, I don't know, it felt more laid back. Okay. It might have been the combination of I didn't hit any lines on Thursday in the exhibit hall. Okay. Because remember last year I hit like every line ever. You did. In the exhibit hall. So. You, it, was like, it was like falling off a tree and hitting every branch on the way yeah. down. Yeah. You, you got, every booth you went to was a long line. That's why I got mo- uh, so many of your things. But, um... But you enjoyed this Gen Con even better than the last Gen Con? I think I did, yes. So in your opinion, they're just getting better. Yeah. That's awesome. I think I liked last year's better, but it's close. It's close. This this was a very good year. Um, I really enjoyed the press events I went to. I really enjoyed hanging out with and talking to all the people I talked to. Um, because I, I, I did his press, his, um, interview on a different day. I don't think I talked as much about talking with Eduardo Barat, but he was a really nice guy. Also... Um, lovely gentleman. Mm -hmm. He, um, you know, in addition, again, in addition to telling us about his upcoming games, 
he just talked with us a bunch. Like after I turned the camera off, we just hung out and we chatted for a while. And then you and Aaron came over and we were all chatting and you were telling him how you really enjoy his game, uh, Murder of Crows. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I mean, again, just a really nice guy. Like I, I would love to hang out with him. He seemed like a great guy to just hang out and have a beer with and play some games with, which is, you know, that's, mm -hmm. that's how I hang out with people. I, I, play, I drink a beer and play games with them. So yeah, I definitely one of my one of my I would say it's probably my second or third. It's up there in my top three for sure. And last year was my number one. So it's probably number two. I'm gonna say number two. But for you, this was your number one. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. That was our Gen Con experience. That was a rundown of all the stuff we did and how we felt about this year's Gen Con. If you have any comments on the things we did or suggestions for us to do next year, uh, feel free to put them in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see us do more convention coverage like all these Gen Con videos we've been releasing, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelt with a K on YouTube. And now before I cut off, just one little bonus bit of, of discussion for those people who actually waited through this, and I forgot to mention this before, just a general feeling. No Mayfair at Gen Con. Mm -hmm. Oh man, was that? I really felt that. Did you? What, what was your feeling? I mean, one, there was no Mayfair coffee in the mornings, and two, without the giant Mayfair exhibit area, yeah, it was filled up by other companies. But I, it, well, it made me a little sad. Yeah, but now instead of the the free Mayfair coffee over on Georgia Street, um, some food trucks showed up for breakfast. It's which, true. I mean, not free. But I mean, Mayfair just had bottles of water and, and coffee. But also, no, this no, a... no Mayfair get together and no ribbon program. Mm -hmm. That bugged me a little bit okay. too because I loved that. I just, what was your? Well, are you okay with it being? I gone? was, I yeah, I didn't miss it oh, at really? all. Um, well, the last couple ribbon things, they didn't have good stuff mm. that I wanted. Well, um, so there you have it. She was a little more ambivalent to the loss of Mayfair. I was still a bit sad. So, there you have it. That is everything, and until next time, game, game on. on.